We'll see if we have anything cool and pertinent. The police academy is always a huge topic on my channel anytime I do any type of live stream. So I'm hoping that we get we get some good comments and questions here. Uh, Silverback Gorilla 85 says, "How long is training where you're at?" It was 12 weeks. I think it it normally it's it was 12 weeks, but the academy was 14. So in case you got hurt, you had extra time to get the mandatory hours in. But training isn't just the police academy. That's something I harp on on the channel all the time. The police academy is the very beginning of training. It is literally, imagine you take your driver's ed class. Do you, after your driver's ed class, go, hey, I took driver's ed, man. I'm going to go hop in that race car. Because that's what it would be like going to the police academy and then assuming you're good to go as a cop. You're just, let's go hit the street. I don't need anything further than that. Training is a, a lifelong thing, but you do... The police academy, so depending on where you're at, it's like three weeks in the, the state with the shortest one to like six to nine months with the states with the longest trainings and you go to field training, whereas where you get somebody like me who's been a cop for 14, 15 years and they show you the ropes and teach you how to apply the things you learned at the academy and then beyond that you start doing in-service training. So every month you have like a six, eight or 16 hour block of training and then you have to go to training classes and get yearly qualification and yada 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 but learning and training is a career long activity it's not something that takes oh well training i always hear it in the, in the news it kills me you know, police academy is it's, it's it's 14 weeks i mean like everybody like, like you you couldn't get a job being a teacher if you only did 14 weeks of training well yeah you couldn't because if you discount all the time people spend in college before they even apply for the job at the police academy, and then you apply academy training, then field training, then in-service training, then the additional classes in order to have any type of specialty. Like in order to use a breathalyzer machine, I have to go to a 40 hour class to use that stupid machine, right? Like there's a class for everything. And once you take all that into account, it starts making a little more sense, but it's not the academy. P110K9 Solution says, my GPA in the academy was 94.23. I got the same job as the guy who had a 99 GPA and the guy who had an 83 GPA. Exactly. It, you're, it's not going to pay you more if you hit, get those top honors at the police academy. Now, it's great to aim for those things if you think you might be in the running, but you don't have to get those top honors. Nelsong Zero said, did you hate the police academy? I didn't hate the police academy, but it wasn't an experience I'd want to go through again. It's one of those things, it's like vehicle pursuits. It's a whole lot cooler to say you did it and to have done it than it is to be in the middle of doing it. My academy was, it was pretty much, it was a stay away academy. We could go home on weekends if we wanted to and I was close enough that I could, so I did. But you stayed there and you were living there. And one of the things the author in the book actually brought up was that they would work until like 4 p.m. So at 3.50, you know, the instructors would take them outside and be running them and fighting with them and, and doing whatever and trying, you know, screaming at them and stuff like that. But they knew at four o'clock they were going home and there were like scammy ways for the instructors to get more time out of them. Dude, they, when I went to the academy, it wasn't, oh, at 4 p.m. I'm going home. They woke us up at five o'clock in the morning to start doing PT and classroom didn't end till 5 p.m. And then if you're department signed you up for something, you could be up until a lighted Spanish class till 11 o'clock at night, and then it'd be back up at 5, 5.30 in the morning to do PT again. It was insane. And the joke was, when anytime you complain about it, they'd be like, oh, go to your department and put an overtime slip in, see how that turns out for you. It's like, this is a job, man. Do you want this job or not? Because if you want to get this certification, you're going to do this. That's it. Do you, do you want your job or not? And that's how they looked at it. So it wasn't, it wasn't that I hated it, but it wasn't a pleasant experience. Don't expect to go in and, like, this is going to be happy, happy, laugh, fun times. Everyday Dingle says, find the guy with gray hair and a revolver when you get out of the academy. They are like Jedi Masters. Some of them are. Some of them not so much. Some of them are still using that revolver because they don't know any better. But other ones are using it because they're really good with it, and they know they can talk their way out of most situations. We just had our last cop with a revolver retire last year. I couldn't believe she she carried that thing all the way to 2018. Unbelievable. She was pretty good with it though. Cool username says dry fire man. I had trouble qualifying until I was able to borrow a shipmate's gun, which was the exact same gun as we use. 
so I can dry fire it a few days before we go to the range live. Oh yeah, that's dry fire is huge. Dry fire is absolutely huge. What's the name of the book? The name of the book is Graduating with Honors, Mastering the Police Academy by Xavier Wells. There's going to be a link down in the description. Uh, Gilbert Ami125 and Eyes Only 12 says, How do you feel about the electronic dry fire machines? And also, can you explain dry fire a bit more? All right, so I have been meaning to make a video about this, and I probably will in the very near future. So dry fire is when you take an unloaded pistol, mostly it's a pistol, take an unloaded pistol, you make sure it's unloaded, you make sure it's unloaded again, you make sure it's unloaded again, and then you put an index card on your vest or something else that will stop the bullet coming out of said pistol in case you screw up unloading it, and you put it across a room that you know no one's going to walk through because there's no doors down that way, hopefully up against a brick wall or something else that also would stop rounds, and you practice cocking the action, pointing it at the target, slowly pulling the trigger until the trigger breaks, which would mean ordinarily the gun would fire, but it just makes a click, and you take note of where your sights are at, then you do that over and over and over again. It's shooting without the ammunition. So you never get the recoil impulse flinch. It's very important if you're going to be shooting something that has an intense recoil. If you shoot something like 40 or 357 SIG at your department, dry fire practice can be literally mean it, it can it could be make or break for you because you're not going to get that uh, that recoil impulse that, that's going to induce a flinch in some people. Uh, no matter what you're shooting, dry fire is going to make you better because it it trains your brain to do the same thing. You know how you you walk and you don't think about where you're moving your feet, you don't think about where you're putting your feet, or you run, you don't think about where you're putting your feet, you don't think about breathing. If you dry fire enough, and enough meaning literally 10 shots a day, your finger will just know what to do. You won't have to think about it. It becomes that muscle memory. And that's what you want from dry fire. P. Shannon 0514 says, Here in Florida, the academy is 20 weeks if you go to the day school and 36 weeks if you go to night school. So night school is, we do that with part-timers here. They'll have an extended night school where you go like Monday, Wednesday, Friday for four hours every day to get through the, the mandatory hour requirements of the academy. Officer Bayou says, in Toxalizer 9000, very much so. Fun class. You get to get drunk in the Intoxalizer class. Leon, that Italian guy, says, study, 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 and enjoy the process. You'll make friends for life. See, that was the opposite experience for me. Everyone I went to the academy with, I don't work with them. I don't think I've seen any of them since. D Denko one says, do you recommend ride-alongs? I do very much so recommend ride-alongs. It's important before you go to the police academy, if it's not your agency's academy, that you go on ride-alongs, that you go to the department, that you learn some things about the place you're going to be working at. Because when you go to that police academy that's put on by an outside agency, you're going to have a better idea in your head on how you're going to apply the things that you're working at, and that's huge. Cool username, talks about using a laser to dry fire. He's stealing my ideas for future videos. Thank you, cool username. Soul Morell says, what if you are afraid to shoot a gun, but you want to be an officer? Here's the problem with that. If you're afraid to shoot a gun, even if you find a job at a department, or you go to another country where you don't have to carry a firearm, you are still gonna have the problem of you're afraid of things like shooting a gun. And if you're afraid of shooting a gun, you're probably also going to be afraid of driving a squad at 120 miles an hour to chase someone who's got a kidnapping victim in their car. Or go to a crack house at 3 o'clock in the morning. Go find somebody. Or even lock, walk through an abandoned warehouse where the alarm went off and the door's broken open where you think there's a burglar inside. There's lots of stuff about police work that is super scary, especially the first time you do it. And if you can't get over shooting a gun, chances are you're not going to be able to get over all the rest of it too. So I'd be very careful about that. And that is the end of our comments and questions. I want to thank everybody on the Instagram live stream for stopping in and talking with me. Uh, if you guys are interested in the book, there is a link to it down in the description below. Please go check it out. They're not expensive. They're a fairly cheap book. Uh, the information on all of 
uh, Xavier Wells' books about getting hired on a police department and getting through FTO and the police academy. It's all really, really good information. There's some stuff I disagree with, it, with him on, but of course, you're never going to completely agree with anybody, especially on a topic where, you know, I'm a field training officer, he works at a police academy. We both have a lot of experience in this, and so we're going to have some, some bifurcated experiences. But that's all right, because a lot of it is really good info that I 100% agree with, and it's wor he's worth listening to, especially if the police academy you're going to is one where it's run by the agency that you're going to the academy at. So that is free field training this week, our special Christmas edition. Hoping to have this out right before Christmas for everybody, so that way you got something to watch when you're all on Christmas break or you're off of work or you're off of school or whatever. Uh, until next week, you guys be safe. Take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. While you're here, check out one of our other videos or head on over to the Patreon and see how you can get your name put on your videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are in the description, of course. We'll see you guys next time.